What's popping, y'all? We back with another episode of the Squid Games Aftermath podcast. I'm your host, DeAndre, aka Player288. And today I have with me a very special guest in the building. He is coming to us all the way from Los Angeles, California. Mr. Rex Jew, aka Player53. What's happening? Y'all, I'm feeling amazing. DeAndre, it's an honor to be on the show, brother. And I'm excited to inform the folks. Okay. <laughs> inform the folks about what? <laughs> I'm excited to inform the folks about what really went down during my uh, five hours in the game. Okay. Well, we're excited to hear it, Coach. We're excited to hear it. So, Mr. Rex Zhu, tell me, why did you decide to apply for Squid Games The Challenge? I decided to apply because I failed on another show to get on. And this was my consolation prize. And I said, do I have to make a video? They're like, no, you don't have to make a video. I said, all right, I'm going to do it. And then, you know what? I'm a Korean heritage. I've got a little bit of the Korean patriotism, we'll call it, in me. And so Squid Games, you know, when it came out, I was pretty excited about that. So I'm like, you know what? I got to represent my people. Go on out there, try to win some money. So what are you mixed with? Just curious. What do I, what? Mix? I mean, what's your like heritage? Like, what's your full heritage? Sorry. Uh, I'm 100% Korean. I speak okay. Mandarin Chinese though. That's a, that's a long story. Okay, interesting, interesting. Okay, mm -hmm. so like, well, I gotta go out for the peoples and whatnot. I like that. Um, so you find out, you apply, and you get accepted to the show. And it's time to get ready to go. So the night when you're packed, the night before you leave and you're packing your bags, what's going on in your head? Man, I'm excited. I'm excited because I know there's gonna be 455 other people that were chosen for a pretty unique reason, I'm sure. And I'm like, this is gonna be really dope. I'm gonna meet a lot of cool people. I'm gonna compete. You know, I mean, a lot of these games are, they're kind of fun. I mean, I, I thought Red Light, Green Light would be a little bit more fun than it was, to be honest. But I'm like, hey, it's like a little challenge. It's like, you know what? I, I grew up competing in different sports and I'm like this is gonna be a fun thing. Okay, nice. So he was he was ready to go, you know, not too worried and just get his game face on. So you get on the plane, head out, and we get to London and quarantine for a couple of days, and it's time to get on to the first game, which we know is red light, green light automatically because they let us know. What's going on in your head on the bus ride there? That's when the nerves are kicking in a little bit. I'm like everybody's having fun, like we weren't supposed to talk, but it was everybody's kind of talking to one another, kind of feeling each other out. And then kind of when that bus finally stopped, and we were supposed to get off. I'm like, all right. Some, some people are going home after this. That was, that was what I was thinking. I'm like, it's not fun anymore. It's time to play. So I had my game face on ever since I stepped off that bus. Hey, you had this game face on, strapped and ready to go. And chin strap buckled up. You know, shoelaces tied tight. And it's time to get on popping. So... When you get in there, we get in the tents, and you can see it's obviously red light, green light as well. And so when you first walk into the red light, green light arena, tell me what's going on in your head. Honestly, I was kind of soaking it in. It was, uh, I think anybody who was in there would agree, like, it was a, it was a wow moment. I was like, this is, this is pretty sick. Like, that was kind of the first thought. And then it was like, all right, get to the front. All right, like, we're going to get across this finish line. You got to get to the front. Can't be in the back. So you'll see me towards the front, try to get as much of an advantage as possible yeah okay okay so what's your strategy going into this after you know we get a practice round and you kind of know what you're doing what, what are you thinking about doing you know i i knew i had to be somewhat cautious right i knew i had to feel it out like i think when they were given the rules and all that they were kind of saying some stuff and everybody's a little bit weary you know we knew it was going to be like the normal red light green light like you're a kid like they're trying to eliminate some people so i was i, I said i was going to side shuffle I'm just gonna side shuffle and be very methodical with it. Start in the front though, so I wasn't I was gonna get a slow start, but I was gonna be methodical. Okay, so methodical. And so when you get there and you start they blow the well, they start playing the music and you get in get in the first pose, five minutes pass, ten minutes pass, fifteen minutes pass. What's going on in your head? My right ass cheek was burning. <laughs> I thought somebody took a liar to me and was lighting my ass cheek on fire, man. I was I was starting to wiggle. And I'm not going to lie, about 10 minutes in, nobody was out. I'm like, seriously, nobody's getting out. I was kind of like ready. I think a lot of people thought the same thing. They're like, I was ready for people to start dropping. Because, I, you know, I think I'm pretty athletic, right? So I'm like, if I'm hurting, 
other people are hurting. So I think uh, I, I give kudos to a lot of people out there, man. I think that first person who dropped still lasted a very long time. So I was uh, I was in a state of panic. I was like, I definitely fucked up my first position. That was one of my first thoughts. But I'm like, I, the, the, the whole first time, I'm like, just get through this first pose. We're going to learn. We're going to do it much easier second time around. That's, that's exactly what I thought. No, definitely. I think actually, like, the people could have gotten out really soon. Because some people, like you can see on the show, the girl, Dar Starla, Starla. Uh, stops really late after everyone else like it's super obvious and they just have to just check everyone before they start popping people automatically so i don't they held it for a long time but i don't think they really had to just looking back on things but yeah you uh you start burning up a little bit in your derriere and uh we keep on moving and so you're inching your way down step by step hour by hour and you get closer and when that finish line is in sight what's going on in your head man i'm like well don't panic don't do anything stupid you know i i there was a thought in me kind of like 75 percent of the way there where it's like I'm, I'm about done doing these poses like i'm, I'm just gonna sprint like tao did as soon as he did that i'm like hmm maybe i'll do that but then i'm like you know what i'm still kind of in the front of the pack you know, I didn't finish first, but I was still in the front of the pack. I knew I had time, right? Because I knew like 50% of the people were behind me, right? So I'm like, don't be stupid and get out. That'd be embarrassing on TV. So I ended up taking the patient route there. And uh, I remember about 10 feet from the finish line, I was stopped. I'm like, I'm for sure going to make it across. That was exciting. So I did a little like jerk and did some cool dancing, which they didn't show. I was right next to 002 favor. We both did together. They didn't show it. So in hindsight, that was stupid, but... I did flex across the finish line. Flexed across the finish line, showing the guns. Well, I guess not showing anything because we had the sweatsuits on, but showing your power and prowess. So, well, congratulations. I'm up okay, that's that's nice. All right, I see you. I mean, it's too bad we had the track suits on then because nobody could really see then, huh? 225 on the squad. I can't bench that. Oh, well, never mind. You know, I guess your glutes wasn't filling out the tracksuits then, huh? Nope. That's, <laughs> that's, that's a damn fact. Well, regardless, congratulations. Player 53 is moving on in the game. He's still in the money and still has his eyes on the prize. And so we get up out of there and then it's time to go to the hotel. Then we come back and it's time to go into the dorms. So when you first step into the dorms, what are you thinking? I'm like, this is sick. This is like, this is where it gets cool. Like red light, green light hurt. I'm like, this is where it gets cool. So I'm like, the dorms are pretty cool. I know we can kind of chill for a little bit. I knew not for a long time, but I'm like, this is cool. Time to meet people, time to hang out, time to soak up the atmosphere. Soak it up. So when you get in there, you see all these people, are you thinking about talking to everybody, forming a small group, and then who do you get close with? Yeah, man. I mean, I think a lot of people met some folks in the tents, you know, before red light, green light. So everybody kind of gravitated towards the people they knew first. So that's what I did. So a lot of the people I saw during red light, green light, uh, some of those folks I saw back at uh, back at the hotel, we got done with red light, green light. When we went to get food, I saw a lot of them congratulating each other, getting hyped. So I went to them first, but then it's kind of looking around because everybody that got the red light, green light is pretty sick, right? Like you did a pretty good job. So it's kind of scoping out the competition and there's some big fellas. There's some, there's some very, there's, there's a mixed demographic. So it's, it was pretty humbling to see. And then who do you end up getting close with? Yeah, I got close with Genu, 030, other Korean brother, you know, similar height, similar stature, similar ethnicity. So flock towards the people that, you know, uh, Ike, uh, Ike was, oh, oh, he was number three. Three. He was three. I know. I know three and four were Christian and Ike. So I was close to both of those. Emma, O two one. All the all the small numbers. Remember, I'm O five three. So me and me and below. And then Dawson, my boy Dawson. He's O five seven. Close to me in line. O five something. But he's close to me in line. So uh, good group of uh, you know young adults, kind of excited, excited to play the game, ready to go, up and at it. And my boy DeAndre said hi to him once i wasn't cool enough to hang out with him hey you know i was flocking with everybody and i was meeting everybody so i wasn't really part of a group i didn't that wasn't my mo or strategy i just wanted to you know meet as many people as i could i had a line group and then i had a couple individuals who i was cool with but you know i didn't spend too much time talking to too many individuals by themselves except for like two or three people 
maybe four, but that's about it. But we became cool because I know we had a moment in there where we were talking, I think, uh, I can't remember when it was, but I remember we were in the middle chatting for a little bit with Tayo. Um, yeah, but I think that was after this next thing I'm getting to. So we're in the dorms a little bit and then we find out 200 is eliminated. What are you thinking when you when this goes down? That was awesome. I honestly, there was a small chance I'm like, that could be me. Everybody for like a slight second would have been like, they'd be kind of embarrassing if it was me. I don't know if embarrassing is the word, but just like, that would just kind of suck, right? So um, I, 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 I suddenly realized it's going to be a little bit of a social game. Like you can't have a target on you. So I had my game face on big time. I think a few people caught on to that. And I'm like, gotta be chill, gotta be chill gotta be chill and i think after that that's when we stopped we started talking a little bit in the middle about everything that was going down because i specifically remember you and tayo we were in this yep. like triangle formation <laughs> when everyone dispersed oh. um so yeah definitely i remember meeting mr jew that time and so we move on and Soon we get to the second game. So we walk into this white room and we see four lines. What's going on in your head? You know, that whole day before I was kind of figuring out, I, I kind of thought one, two, three, four. I knew, I knew it was Dalgana. I had, a, I had a pretty strong feeling you could see from the wall. And based on the wall pictures, I think number four was like either the circle or the triangle. I couldn't remember, but I remember thinking that could be the order of the shapes. I did not know four was unlucky and that's embarrassing for me because that's from my culture but i i told myself i was going in four <clears throat> i started in one i knew i was going one or four because that was like circle and triangle on the wall um and then all my alliance was going to four too i'm like we ride or die together and we died together okay you ride or die together even though it's a solo game uh interesting but we move on and so they finally reveal what's going on the first group goes in and chaos commences you have to pick a shape and whatnot so first group gets in there boom they're out second group gets in there boom they're out third group goes in there and they finally figure out what they're going to do and ultimately how did you feel about seeing all this go down yeah, I first want to say an honorable mention. Probably the most comforting part of that experience was when uh, my buddy DeAndre here uh, was in the room and they said, let's do a race. And I was like, they want to race DeAndre? I said, ain't no way we're getting the umbrella. That's what I told myself. I said, ain't no way. Anyways, DeAndre gets killed off and then we move on to your question. But Spencer, <clears throat> my boy Spencer, I related to him, man. A very genuine guy. Shout out Spencer, a good friend of mine, a good friend of yours as well, um, but a very genuine guy. Um, obviously not a great matchup with Brighton. I was I was in a little bit of fear that that could happen, but you know, somebody had to pick it. And as soon as he picked it, I, I was I was game face. You could see the camera zoom in on me. I'm, I'm looking to the side and I'm focused. I'm like, all right, let's get this damn umbrella out. That's what you were thinking, huh? <clears throat> That's what you were thinking. That's exactly what I was thinking. Now, in the first five, 10 minutes, there's probably a little bit of like, ah, oh, shit, I'm probably going home. But then I'm like, I remember Teo coming over to me and Christian. He's like, hey, it's still beatable. And so I'm like, hey, he's exactly right. And I'm like, that'd be for a pretty cool story. And there was a small part of me, a sick part of me in the back of my head that said like, It'd be cool to try the umbrella. Like, I, I think I was pretty confident to get the circular triangle, but it's like, I want to do battle with that. Like, I'm just curious if I can get it or not, right? I Obviously, most people won't be able to get it, but I'm like, at least I can say I tried to try to do the hardest one. Yeah. No, definitely. It's, a, yeah. it's a, way harder. I think the degree of difficulty from the star to the umbrella is the biggest gap, as you can see, and how many people made it and whatnot. And so it is a challenge, you know? I mean, I kind of wish everybody had to do the umbrella. <laughs> But um, that's not the name of the game. And yes, we are left with that. Um, and yeah, it's time to face our fears, or I guess face the challenge of the umbrella. So what uh, with this six to eight hour block time you guys are waiting, tell me like the atmosphere and the vibes in the room. 
Oh man, it was it was it was low vibes. People were definitely a lot of napping, a lot of like, well, fuck it, we're just gonna chill. Like a lot of people were already kind of ready to go home. Like I, people were already talking about what food they're gonna eat and all that. Like people were starting to give up, to be honest. Um, you know, some folks had a glimmer of hope. So you kind of it was this balance of like, these are the cards we're dealt, and like, hey, it'd be pretty sick to get it done, right? But I mean, that six hour, eight hour time period was pretty brutal, bro. We were. Uh, we were chilling a while. So we were trying to find ways to pass the time. They kept going like, stop talking. I'm like, dude, it's eight hours. What are you supposed to do? Yeah, no, definitely. I mean, you gotta, you can't just sit there and quiet and just, you know, slow, slowly die. You know, you gotta kind of keep uplifting and send positive affirmations towards each other and good vibe and everything else. So your mind is in the right place. So it is eventually time to get into the playground and you guys walk in and see Spencer. Tell me how that went. Yeah, I uh, I could tell that he uh, he didn't want to make too much contact with many folks. So, uh, yeah, some folks kind of came up to him, maybe said some things. Some folks comforted him. I just felt like, he, you know, a lot of people were going to talk to him, have a reaction. So I just kind of went my route, right? I was definitely not too far on any end of the spectrum. I kind of got it and I'm like, I'm focusing on getting this thing done. I'm not, uh, no animosity, no sympathy. We're just going to focus on the umbrella right now. Yeah, the line vision on site. So when you finally get your shape and it's time to get started, tell me how, tell me what, how it goes and whatnot and your whole process behind it. I can lie. When I first saw the umbrella, I'm like, I think it's beatable. Like it, it, there was the curved handle and stuff, but it didn't look as intricate as on the show like it was a little bit more reasonable than i thought um and then uh in the first group somebody got through a couple people got through dr v um my buddy uh dr v said oh, yeah. Yeah, right. saeed saeed said um they both got through and i'm like hey any given day somebody can get this thing done so i kind of i got a little optimistic if nobody would have got through on that first round i've been like this is this is pretty bad but couple people got through and I'm like time to dial in well, so tell me what your strategy is going into this and how you trying to get it done I mean when it was our turn to go uh said was like hey a lot of saliva so I'm like hey we only got 10 minutes this thing's in intricate shape a lot of saliva so everybody's starting to build up their saliva and I gave a lot of saliva at that cookie um I definitely tested the waters a little bit. So I noticed there's some thicker sides and some softer sides. I'm like, I'm not about to crack this thing right away. So I, and you'd see from the show, I kind of used about all my time. So I uh, definitely took my time with it, got pretty close, battled with it for quite some time. Um, definitely gave it the full nine yards. And then unfortunately he cracks a little bit of the cookie and you can see that in the show, and he has a little slightly dramatic exit. Sadly, that ends our friend Rex, aka Player 2053's journey on Squid Games. So tell me, when you get, you know, when you get uh, popped and whatnot and you exit, tell me how you feeling once you get back to the hotel. See, he's still, he's dead. I'm like, I got to recess it. There we go. He's back. He's back. He's back. I'm back. Sorry, a little bit of lag. Um, so I get back to the hotel. I'm eating food for the first time. I'm like, feels kind of nice, um, but definitely kind of hurts. It's kind of like a little bit of FOMO, right? Like vibes are down a little bit. Um, get back to the hotel, see a lot of you folks. It's kind of cool to catch up, but you know, it, it's this bittersweet moment where it's like, it's cool to get food and go back to normal life. But like, there's a part of you that's like, man, I feel like I went out a little early, a little too early. No, definitely it was tough i mean the umbrella people especially had a had the hardest dent game i mean that game that game in particular umbrella had the lowest percentage of uh completion or the highest unsuccessful rate out of any game that was played out of red light green light out of marbles out of warships out of any game that that was played in the whole show that particular game the lowest percentage of people were able to move on to the next so you know, it was uh, very unfortunate, you know, uh, the way that it kind of transpired. And sometimes that's just life, you know, you get dealt a crappy hand of cards and you got to figure out how to make it work sometimes. And a lot of times you got to fold and just say, 
you know, on to the next. But unfortunately, this time folding means exiting the poker table and not returning and losing all your money. So, yeah, so that happens. And then so tell me when you get back home and you fly out of London, tell me how you're feeling now. Yeah, you know, I think it was a bummer. Um, for some reason, the dorms, I heard a few people were kind of iffy or thought I could be a villain or whatever. So part of me, too, was like, I've got a corporate that? career. Yeah, I mean, Dash made a pretty good video about it. But for some reason, some folks were under the impression that I was a ringleader and I was kind of running an alliance, which actually wasn't true. And and I and I attribute it to my um, resting... Uh, competition face not really smiling pretty pretty head down i was only talking to dudes so i've got a serious girlfriend <clears throat> who's now my fiance thanks for the congratulations deandre but i was on a mission talking to no girls i was not about to be seen on tv flirting with girls talking to girls so i talked to just dudes and i think people thought i was like only talking to dudes running a dude line. so i was a little bit relieved that like i didn't go far enough to be a part of the drama because it got it got drama full dramatic you mean <laughs> yeah it got very dramatic in there um so tell me how you feeling when you got when your your vibes when you're back in la you know i i talked to psychiatrist a few times i was like it was a mix of like i feel like i left the game a little bit early and a mix of honestly a little bit of relief because I'm, I'm a corporate guy so i'm like i i couldn't damage my reputation too bad only being there a couple days i remember calling you calling spencer i'm like you didn't hear I was a villain, did you? I just, I just looked like. And when you saw me in the show, when they zoomed in on me, I was resting bitch face. I was, uh, I looked like a, I looked like a Asian mafia dude, and I, I can attest to that. So, I was definitely a little bit nervous for that to happen. I knew there was no possibility if I went home early, but you know, there's still a little bit of shoulda woulda. Like I was in line one at first, and I moved to line four, and you know i mean i think everybody realizes after it went down that it was a complete crap shoot anybody could have gotten that umbrella line you know nobody yeah. knew it was gonna be the first person second person third person or who would do what so it's just uh you know the cards weren't dealt my way and that's that's life yeah that's how it goes sometimes uh but you know i definitely think you know dealt with a different hand you probably could have made it really really far in the game uh i don't know how far because you only had a guy talking to guys so it didn't really pan out well for us guys and y us young guys in the show um because they kind of got chopped off real quick soon um but i think you did a good job man you kind of you got you, your face was known in the dorms people knew who you were you were doing what you needed to do to kind of make those initial steps and plant those seeds to kind of push them further along it just kind of you know you stepped in the wrong line well stepped in a line that unfortunately got umbrella and you know, that cut many people's time short that I think definitely would have done amazing on the show. So, yeah, that ends your journey. Um, so now the show is wrapped. Everything, all the episodes have been seen. How do you view the show as a whole now that everything is said and done? You know, I'm super grateful for the experience. After watching the show back, I think they did a pretty good job. You know, I know, I know some folks would say that they focus too much on the main characters. But, you know, I think I think you could see a lot of different folks. Um, you know, I think about everybody saw themselves on there and could be pretty proud of the production that happened. And I think especially folks that were in the dorms, I mean, you could relate to a lot of the experiences that were going on. And I think that's that's the coolest part of the experience is only one person wins the money. The other people leave with hopefully an incredible experience and learning opportunity. I think that I, I still was able to get that. So a feeling of gratitude. Uh, now that the finale is done, it feels like uh, it feels like like the time's kind of ticking on this little uh, fantasy journey here, and it's kind of on to the next. But um, really grateful for the experience, made some incredible lifelong friends, had the privilege of staying with the man run the podcast himself, DeAndre. Shout out DeAndre, go run some birds from the man. Yeah, definitely. Anytime you welcome over here, you always know that. And tell me how you feeling about our winner, uh, Mai. Um, I'm honestly, if you would have told me she wanted to start, I would have been a little flabbergasted. I'm, I'm really impressed with her. You know, I think she's got a really cool story. We got to talk a little bit at the um, Squid Games, the Trials PR experience. Shout out Spencer, allowing me that opportunity to come with him. But she's extremely genuine. She played the game. She played the game hard. 
I respect that. She's of Asian descent. I really respect that as well. And she's got a cool story. And I, I think the coolest part, I, I texted her. I'm like, you're one of the few people that went, no strings attached to win the money. Everybody else is like, you know what? Maybe I'll make it far, become an influencer. Or, hey, maybe I'll get shown a lot and whatever. She did not give a shit about screen time or any of that. She was there to win the money. And she did just that, which was pretty badass. Like that's, that's heroic. Yeah, no, definitely goes to show she was there for one reason and one reason only, and that was the bag. And if she didn't have it, then, you know, all that other stuff doesn't mean anything to her, clearly, because she just got Instagram today. So um, definitely huge props to my, you know, my number, my number neighbor. Uh, love love her winning. That's definitely, you know, put, a, put some tears in my eyes and a smile on my face. Um, cause just because I knew her from the beginning. But, yeah, definitely big shout-outs to my. She definitely deserved it and she is i think a great representative to be the first winner of the show and if you ain't seen it i'm sorry for spoiling it i'll put it um, it's gonna be an, it's in the bio but it is what it is catch up and put some ketchup on your fries well man rex i appreciate you talking with me is there anything you want to say to the peoples before we get up on out of here hmm all i can say is my twin brother has already put his application in for season two. Y'all better watch out. If you think you see me again, you're not drunk. You're not seeing double. My twin brother's going in there for the bag. That man is not a social media boy. He's in there to win some money. So casting team, y'all better get with the program and put him in there. Put him in there. Okay, okay, we'll see. We'll see, he might be, you know, trying to do better than you, so definitely you know he got I hope you give him some good pointers and some good notes on you know some strategies so that's on you but however he does i'm putting that responsibility on your shoulders gotta talk to some girls brother you gotta do it <laughs> you gotta do it definitely definitely well rex i really do appreciate you coming on the podcast you my dog you my home scale of biscuit my ace boom you always there for a brother and down for the cause. And I always appreciate that and you. So until next time, y'all, we out here on the Squid Games Aftermath podcast. Peace and blessings.